The Nazca Lines are one of the most intriguing mysteries of ancient Peru. Thousands of geometric shapes, trapezoids, lines, strips, and spirals have been drawn on the desert surface for unknown purposes. Many people are familiar with the outlines of the most famous giant drawings, a spider, a condor, and a monkey. The question that has always puzzled archaeologists and others who study the history of South America is, how did they get there? Who made the Nazca Lines? Why were they made and made with such precision? The first real reports of the lines came from Peruvian military and civilian pilots who flew over the area in the 1920s. Located in southern Peru on the Nazca Plateau, the Nazca Lines are pre-Columbian geoglyphs or large designs or drawings that have been etched into the desert sands. Nearly 300 of them have been discovered so far and many consist of plants or animals such as a hummingbird, spider, fish, lizard, dog, and a human. Other shapes include trees and flowers. They cover an area of roughly 1,000 square kilometers or 386 square miles. Some of them can only be spotted from the air, while others can be distinguished from surrounding foothills and other high places. They are believed to have been created around 500 BC, but that is just an estimate. The Nazca Lines have puzzled archaeologists, historians, mathematicians, and others who have studied them extensively for decades. But few people know about the existence of another set of huge drawings that were only just recently discovered. The first of these were spotted by tourists who were flying over the Nazca Plateau in the 1990s. They are located between the Nazca Plateau and the city of Palpa. These geoglyphs are remarkably different from the Nazca Lines. They are known as estrellas or stars. This is what they look like from the air. These drawings or designs are nothing like the traditional Nazca geoglyphs. These designs represent geometric and other mathematical equations that consist of circles, squares, and points. It is hard to make out these designs from the surface. They look like sloppy and uneven rows of stones and lines that could have been drawn by dragging a foot or a stick. Stones or heaps of stones have been piled at various locations. Ancient and rotted poles have also been placed at the site of the Estrellas, which may or may not have been used by the builders. This is one of the largest designs ever discovered in Peru. It is more than 130 meters or 142 yards in size. From a ground level view, it is nearly impossible to understand what is depicted. Academic science has largely ignored it. Some even call it nothing more than a tourist trap, which can be easy to understand. Yet, there are some who believe that whatever is depicted here has a much deeper meaning. As it turns out, this is not the only image of this kind. On the edge of this plateau is another similar design that was also just recently discovered. The design is marked on maps and locals call it the mandala. It is similar to the mandala designs of ancient India and it means a circle or geometric design 
that holds a great deal of symbolism in Hindu and Buddhist cultures. Its size is about 120 meters or 131 yards wide. In detail, it differs from an Estrella. Parts of it are very uneven, and another part is located at the bottom of the gorge. At the same time, the proportions of this geoglyph are very precise. The outline of it looks perfect when viewed from above, and its construction is very complex. Located next to this creation is yet another interesting and perplexing design. It connects to both sides of a canyon. Located at each end, there are depictions of small stars. Located in the middle is a large star with 16 rays of light or sunlight protruding from it. Keep this in mind, as it is similar to another design that will be shown later. During a flight over the Palpa area in 2010, we were fortunate enough to find several similar images in the same area. These are rather large and complex designs and not always completely visible at first. They cannot be seen from satellite views of the area and they are nearly impossible to spot from an airplane. The images only come into view with high resolution photos. Part of this design can be seen through these pictures. A similar design with a much more complex pattern is located a few hundred feet away. In both cases, the design of each creation can only be spotted from the air. A bird's eye view of this design offers a different perspective and the existence of this creation only creates more questions and mystery. This might be the most difficult and creative geoglyph on the Nazca Plateau. The center of this design is clearly visible. There are eight layered circles in total. The width of the central section is 35 meters or 114 feet. The width of the design is about 200 meters or 218 yards, about the length of two football fields. This is another view of the design. It is located near the crossroad. The center of the design is clearly visible, as well as a portion of the circles that are plotted on the diameter. The construction of this segment brings up an interesting detail that presents another mystery. The circles and the center of this design are created with rows of stones. On one side, the circles have been constructed with a dotted line that is difficult to spot. This would seem to indicate that the builder or builders used stones that were in the area around them. This brings up an interesting detail about this design. This design is invisible at ground level and still hard to distinguish from a small height, but viewed at a higher angle or elevation, it's clear that the designers created a huge, abstract, geometrically correct figure. That it could not be viewed at ground level or higher angle or elevation did not seem to concern them. Perhaps when the geoglyph was created, all details may have been visible, or perhaps it had been illuminated at some point. The mystery remains as to why it was built to begin with, who, or what was it for? What purpose did it have? These are questions that are difficult to answer. Further investigation of the Nazca region continues to yield new discoveries that create even more questions. Some of these designs have appeared in previous videos, but new details have only recently been uncovered.
One example of this is a simple Estrella design. Located on a hill of natural or perhaps artificial origin, the central stone used in this design is clearly visible. It is surrounded by eight stones located in a circle. Eight rays radiate from this circle and stretch quite far. The stones are arranged at regular intervals in a 100-meter circle. Beams were constructed without any particular distance between stones. This is a similar design. It is constructed in much the same way. A small circle of stones is also visible, a subject that I will touch on later. This is what it looks like from ground level. Stones are centrally placed with a diverging radius. These are the simplest drawings of this type. Here is an entire group of figures that are drawn very close to each other. This design is much more complex. It contains much more detail. This is what the internal structure looks like. Crosshairs, corners, and lines are clearly visible around the large circle. Unfortunately, this design has been covered with sand a lot of it has been lost, and it is no longer possible to create a detailed drawing. Nearby, there is a design which is very similar to the mandala shown earlier. This is how the center of this design looks like from the ground level. The lines of it are very similar to the traditional Nazca lines. The next picture appears to represent concentric circles. These figures are approximately the same size. They are concentric circles that have diameters of 28, 56, and 112 meters. We see that the center is drawn on the top of a small hill, and the circles themselves are constructed along the terrain. Just 100 meters away, or 109 yards, we discovered the exact same image constructed in what appears to be the exact same way. Here is its center, the first circle, then the second. And we also see how the largest of the circles was constructed. Why was it necessary to draw or create circles in such a complex way? Why was it created to begin with? Who was it created for? The circles do not appear to be perfect from images taken directly above it, but a lot of the perception depends upon the angle which the drone camera is shooting at. At a great height, the two circles appear to be correct. The greater the height, the more uniform the circles appear to be. What the purpose of this was, or who it was for, remains unknown. Is another similar drawing or design. It also features a similar arc that traverses along a rather deep ravine and a very steep slope. The builders who constructed this design did not need to place it in this exact area. There was enough free flat space nearby. Distortions of a large circle passing along the bottom of the ravine are clearly visible, and that's because of the angle of the drone's camera. Я нашел шесть таких рисунков, нанесенных на 
I found only six such drawings, four of which were applied to complex relief. Last year, when I gave a report on the Nazca lines, I showed this diagram. It roughly shows the locations of Estrella-like figures. On satellite maps, such images are practically invisible, and therefore, it was made according to very indirect and imperceptible signs. It had been suggested that some of the Estrellas could be connected by lines of stones. And this year, in February, I managed to make a trip and try to find the drawings in this place. Taking a trip like this was a risk. If nothing can be viewed from satellite maps of the area, it's quite possible that nothing will be found on the exact spot chosen for a closer investigation. The trip could have been a waste of time and not revealed much at all. This investigation would take us far away from the city of Nazca. It meant a trip across the entire Nazca Plateau and then moving in the direction of the ocean using only local landmarks. There are no roads here. There are no bridges. If you wanted to cross this river, you had to wade across. Unfortunately, we had chosen a time of year where the river was quite full. There are no lifeguards here. One slip could result in disaster. Picking an area to wade across or ford the river wasn't always easy. This meant a lot of detours on trails that are very hard to describe as roads. It also requires a pair of good boots, as the investigation in this remote area required quite a bit of walking. Fate, however, smiled upon us. We did eventually find the right spot to wade through the river and make it to the other side. We did eventually reach the spot we had been looking for. However, this trip was still a gamble. We suspected something might be here, but we really wouldn't know until we could get a view from above. This is the area we wanted to be at. There were piles of stones that were located very close to the entrance of this gorge, but were they placed there by someone else, or were they just a natural part of the landscape? We still didn't know. But as we drew closer, the cluster of stones in what seemed to be giant arcs made by rows of stones against the uneven hillside revealed that this deserved closer investigation. As it turned out, the journey across the Nazca Plateau would not be a wasted exercise. We had found what we came to see. The first pictures and video delivered by the drone camera revealed an amazing picture. It's a figure of some sort that appears to resemble a star consisting of eight rays and then a complex system of circles. Untouched by time and the elements, this intricate internal construction of this geoglyph features many different elements. The drone footage revealed shapes that can only be seen from above. Crosses, points, lines, and intricate corners. Several separate circles are visible here. And there is also a star-shaped structure at the top of the hill. This is a whole group of previously undiscovered Estrellas. Time and shifting winds partially covered the geoglyph with sand, and it also had been damaged by a nearby road. The true size and shape of this design is reflected in this reproduction. The solid and thick lines represent rows of stones. Thin, solid lines are drawn with a stick or foot. The dots are separate piles of stones. 
The dotted lines are virtual lines on which stones were placed in a regular manner. The star featuring eight rays and the great circle form a single system. The circles on the right and the star at the top were most likely drawn separately. Interestingly, the two circles on the right have approximately the same slope and proportions as the circles on the tourist Estrella, which was shown at the very beginning of the report and which is located miles away from this place. It is assumed that the authors of both Estrellas are the same and that the people who constructed these figures pursued a specific goal. There is another important detail to consider. The thick gray dotted line in this illustration represents the center line of the piles of stones that runs through the gorge and connects all Estrellas into a single combination. The next map shows a similar scheme involving large numbers of geoglyphs. Nineteen Estrellas, or groups of Estrellas, are united by a common line running along the bottom of this gorge and uniting all geoglyphs into a single combination. The total length is about five and a half kilometers, or nearly three and a half miles. At the 18th figure, however, the center line does not continue. The only exception to the diagram is the second geoglyph. It is off-axis and consists of two layered images. One design is lined with rows of stones and resembles the central part of the tourist Estrella. There are a large number of crosses and stones here, which appear to have been put into place as markings. This represents the coordinate grid for the second and possibly incomplete Mandela design, which has been drawn by tracing over the surface. The following represents a sketch of these unique designs. It is interesting to note that these designs are rotated in a relative way to each other by one and a half or two degrees. Many Estrellas, which we have seen and will see, have small inaccuracies. This may be largely due to the carelessness and imperfection of the builder's tools, but it is also quite possible that sometimes a symmetry was introduced by the builders deliberately. The reason for this is unknown. Number three is similar to the design that was shown earlier. It represents a star that is connected to the opposite slope of this gorge with a ray. There is a circle on this line, which is divided into 16 parts. And this is what the other slope looks like. A stick or post is clearly visible on the star, which could have been used in its construction or played a role in the use of this geoglyph, providing it was constructed with a use in mind and was not designed to be artwork or the work of someone's vivid imagination. This design shows that the center line passes in the shape of a circle. The next geoglyph is number four. This design looks much different from the previous examples. There are whole systems of symbols at work here, which may have a definite or important meaning. The quality of the design itself may also be significant. This example shows another unique sign in the form of two squares. They appear to be rotated relatively to one another and make up the central section of the mandala. For simplicity purposes, we'll call it a center or bud. Another noteworthy sign is how the axial lines interact with the geoglyphs. One line appears to go through the circle in an almost tangential or digressive way. The next axial line starts from the border of the center or the bud. This is geoglyph number five, representing the bud and circles. 
The axial line here is still clearly visible. It stretches to geoglyph number four, which has already been examined. At this location, the gorge becomes very narrow and makes a small zigzag feature. The Estrellas here appear to carry a number of designations, such as possibly designating the turn of an axle. The next group is also unusual, consisting of a bud and triangles. The location of the triangles appears to indicate the slopes of the gorge itself. The next geoglyph is also a bud and triangles that appear to point along the gorge to the nearest open location. This is unlike any other Estrella since the triangles appear to indicate turns in the gorge itself in the narrowest of areas as if it were almost designed for aircraft entering or departing the area. The shots taken from the overhead drone at least seem to show this is what the triangles may have been for. A sketch of the fifth and sixth geoglyphs reveals another interesting feature. The adjustment of the angles of the geoglyphs to the axial lines is clearly visible. But what purpose did it serve? The seventh design is remarkable in that the bud is superimposed on the triangles. There are several other geoglyphs that are remarkably similar to each other. The tenth design represents a simple bud that appears to mark an axial break. Other remarkable finds may reveal clues about when the geoglyphs were made and possibly why. The eighth design, for example, has many prints or tracks that were made across it at a later date. Some of them belong to modern motorcycles which have traversed this area, such as the clearly visible trail on the ninth geoglyph. However, many of the tracks also appear to be uneven and may not have been caused by modern transport. It may be possible that an old road from an early Spanish colonial period passed through this section of the gorge. Large fragments of pottery from the colonial period possibly made with a potter's wheel could be found throughout the gorge. Footprints going over and through the geoglyphs are also easy to spot. They could have been made before or after the Spanish conquest. Other indications include pottery or ceramic that were not made with a potter's wheel. They were discovered on the geoglyph sites as well which means they could have been made before European invaders arrived in Peru. A more accurate estimate of the time period in question could also be obtained by carbon dating tests on the half-rotted poles, which can often be found on the Estrellas. We sent our drone camera to fly over the axial line, which clearly reveals how it was made. There are heaps of stones here, interspersed with short lines. The 17th Estrella that we looked closely at is somewhat different from its predecessors and creates even more questions. It has an irregular structure and many of its details are not comprehensible at this point. Further investigation and study here may yield additional answers. The schematic drawing of the Estrella provides a clearer picture. This design is connected by a straight line with what appear to be several figures. This would seem to imply an overall plan for this design. This may be a large group of several Estrellas that are each more than one kilometer or a little more than a half mile in size. It is crossed by several diameters on which short lines are clearly visible. From the ground level, this diameter is barely visible. 
but from above, it begins to take on an entirely new shape that appears to serve some sort of purpose. Stones were discovered on the slope. A row of stones were also found passing through the center of the geoglyph, which, by the way, looks incomprehensible and sloppy from the ground level. Further, the line passes through the center and stretches to the opposite slope and even slightly across the plateau. This is the end of the entire Estrella group. After the 18th, neither axial nor other geoglyphs were found. However, the area still merits further investigation. In addition, Estrellas have been spotted in other areas, one of which is not all that far away from the Estrella Gorge. While it may be close by, it does not appear to be connected with the axial group, this Estrella is also not visible on satellite maps and is nearly impossible to see from an airplane. It was discovered by complete chance. This is the most complicated Estrella that has been discovered to date. Moreover, after editing this video, it became clear that this was only part of what is likely a much larger picture. Even with the limited pictures and videos, it appears that the people who designed this had some specific plan or project in mind. By this, I mean that they knew exactly what they were building and designing and why. There are a lot of markings and other small details around this Estrella which serves to partially conceal it. The design, like many similar others, is applied over the ancient Nazca lines. Axis lines emerge from the figure, which may possibly end in other figures. Some diameters appear to go far enough, hundreds of meters away. This creates questions about who did this and why it was done. And it would be quite natural to talk about their authors and purpose, However, this will be part of another investigation. There are layers of these designs that are still being discovered. We know where some of them are, but not all. In all probability, there are a lot more and they raise new questions. In this diagram, for example, you can clearly spot a dark square between numbers 3 and 4. This is also a large image with an axial line that passes through it. It appears to belong to another mysterious group and type of geoglyphs. These include strange drawings as well as geometric images that are applied to the ancient Nazca geoglyphs and appear to interact with them. This investigation shows that they exist but the meaning of them hasn't been determined. It's only safe to say that there are a lot of them. Not all of them have been photographed yet. Another trip will be required to document them and hopefully find out what purpose they may have served, if any. However, we can make the following assumptions about what has been discovered. These designs were not recently created and are not designed to draw tourists to the area. More than 100 of geoglyphs like this have been discovered so far and it's likely there are many more. They are also scattered over a fairly large area that correspond to the ancient settlements of the Nazca population. Many of these geoglyphs are drawn on the traditional Nazca lines. Fragments of ancient ceramics can often be found on the Estrellas, which indicates their pre-Hispanic origin. Another point to make is this. Archaeologists now believe that the Huari culture of Peru absorbed the Nazca culture and people. The Huari culture is credited for creating the Tokapu, 
which is a set of signs that are often depicted on textiles and ceramics. And these symbols are very similar to the details of the Estrella designs or geoglyphs that have been just recently discovered. It's also possible that, given the later age of the Estrellas when compared with the Nazca lines, that these creations were just a continuation of the construction of geoglyphs. It's also possible that these developments took place in the Huari culture, which continued up until the Spanish conquest of Central and South America. Theories abound about who created the Nazca lines and why. Anthropologists, ethnologists, and archaeologists alike have studied these areas extensively. Some suggest they were created to be seen by ancient gods. Still others suggest the figures suggest constellations of stars in nearby solar systems. And there are some who believe they have something to do with the directions of winter solstice and equinox sunset. The purpose of the Estrella figures and why they were made may never be discovered. They remain as much of a mystery as the Nazca lines, which continue to create new theories as to why they were built and who or what they were built for.